Hi, everyone. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever time it is, wherever you are. Hello, hello. Thank you for joining. I am 22 weeks pregnant today and I'm very excited to be here with you. So I have some new and exciting things that I want to talk about and do together today that aren't our traditional um, exercises that we do together um, every single month. So I want to introduce a new program to you guys. And this program is called A Matter of Balance. And you may or may not have heard of it before. I became certified to teach A Matter of Balance probably about four years ago um, when I was going to PT school at AT Still University. So for those of you, who, if I'm new, if I'm a new face for you, my name is Dr. Lauren. I'm a physical therapist by training and I specialize in neurology. So what that means is I work closely with patients who have had strokes or dementia, spinal cord injury, Parkinson's, it's all in my wheelhouse. So I'm very excited to bring this program to you guys. It's multiple sessions. So what it is, is it's gonna be eight sessions and we'll most likely deliver two sessions a month. Um, we'll kind of play with it. You'll have to kind of bear with me as we go through this. It'll be a lot of trial and error. So the traditional program is meant to be delivered in person to help facilitate a lot of group discussion. So we're definitely doing a modified version of that. It's not going to be the traditional way that a matter of balance is delivered. I'm going to try to get you all the resources, tools, videos, handouts that you need just through an online format. So um, each session will be about an hour and today is session one. So if you are joining, you are walking into session one of A Matter of Balance. It's an eight week program or an eight session program really designed to kind of target ideas and thought processes behind fear of falling. Um, there's gonna be exercise involved. Don't worry, we're gonna exercise. I'm gonna teach you a series of exercises. The exercises are kind of geared toward helping you with your strength, your balance, your mobility, your confidence, and you're really gonna walk away with a better understanding of your beliefs in regards to falls, and then some good strategies and tools and resources that you guys can use to help um, implement you know, falling less. And then if you do have a fall, what to do, we're gonna kind of go over everything that has to do with getting older and our thought processes and our belief system with falls and if there's a fear of falling. There's a lot of research coming out these days about just fear of falling, not even just falls. We, we all know falls are a problem in our older adult population, right? But now addressing that fear of falling is really what we're gonna be focusing on today. Let me see. So basically, um, I'm so excited to deliver this program to you guys. I want you to, when you take it, to take full advantage of this program, what you're gonna wanna do is definitely pull up your care provider next to you or your significant other or your loved one or your caretaker, whoever it is that's like spending time with you and helping you right now, you feel free to involve them in this program because they're going to help you facilitate the conversations and the discussions that need to be had, but then they're also going to get a whole, you know, breadth of knowledge on what you're probably going through as the person who might have some fears of falling or some concerns, or maybe you actually have falls and they're a problem for you. So pull up a chair, get comfortable, get a water. We're not going to be exercising day one. We're just going to be going over the program and what to expect. And we'll do a couple of worksheets together. And then exercise will start next time for session two, or it will start for session three. We'll kind of play it by ear. 
what else did I want to talk to you about? The format, you know, typically, like I said, in real life, it, it's a group discussion. So it's going to be a little different because these aren't recorded live. These are going to be pre-recorded for you guys. And we're, we can kind of talk about that as we go um, if we need to make some adjustments, but recording them ahead of time will not really allow us to interact with each other. So I want you to really interact with your care partner or your loved one by talking to them about what we talk about in our session together later on that day or maybe the next day or over the course of the next week. You're gonna have some homework to do. So maybe doing your homework with them and involving them in on that process is gonna be very helpful. So I have a workbook that I'm going to be working out of to, to lead and teach you guys. And then I'll make sure that you have access to the handouts before you watch each session so that you can um, have what you need in order to be successful in our sessions together. And then also what you'll need for homework before you come to the next session. And I'll make sure you get links, whatever you guys need to feel successful. I want you to feel free to communicate with me um, or communicate with Oakwood directly on, on what you need. So if everyone has a pen and a paper, now would be a good time. You can feel free to take some notes or you can just take it all in, depending on what kind of a learner you are. Um, I write everything down like a crazy person, that's just me. But my, my email and the best way to get in touch with me, I want everyone to kind of write this down so that if you have any questions over the course of the program, you can feel like you can just reach out to me directly. My email is exercise, so E-X-E-R-C-I-S-E, -E, and then PT, as in physical therapist, 267 at gmail.com. So again, my email, the best way to get in touch with me, I respond the quickest. It's going to be exercise PT267 at gmail.com. Okay. Perfect. So the program's main approach here, I'm going to reiterate it like a few times so that you can understand fully what you're getting yourself into for the next eight sessions. I think everyone would benefit from this, whether you have had falls or you haven't, because it's going to help you make sure that you're prepared, maybe if you haven't had a fall or had a best prepare or thought processes that you might have regarding falls. Um, and then for those who falls are a problem, it's going to help decrease that fall risk. So the purpose is really to help reduce that fear of falling and um, thereby it will help increase your activity level, right? So the first step toward a healthier attitude toward falls or toward the fear of falling is to understand what your own beliefs are and what your own biases are. So during this class, you will, as a participant, recognize positive and negative beliefs about falls and how to shift from like a self-defeating and limiting kind of mindset to a more positive thinking mindset. So this can lead to success in efforts to help you prevent falls and fear of falling. The skill of learning how to shift your mindset from negative to positive thinking patterns is gonna, we're gonna call that cognitive restructuring. So, and it's thinking about something in a different way than you thought about it before. And that can take a lot of time and effort and energy in order to kind of reframe our thought process, not just with falls, but with anything in life, right? So be gentle and delicate with yourself during this time as you kind of introduce something completely new and something maybe you're not very familiar with doing. So defining the program um, as an offering, it's gonna offer you a way to help 
learn more about fall prevention strategies. So we'll definitely go over how to prevent falls from occurring in the first place. But we're also going to go ahead and talk about what happens if you do have a fall, which I know we've talked about a little bit before if you've been to any of my in person classes. We'll talk about personal plans that you can come up with to carry out your fall prevention strategy. So just because you sit here and you think like, oh yeah, I really should put a night light uh, from my hallway from my bedroom to my bathroom so that I can see where I'm going in the middle of the night when I get up to go to the bathroom. Just because you have that thought process doesn't mean that you always implement that action. So we'll take it all the way down to the action step to kind of figure out what can you really do action wise to make sure you're taking the steps that you need to be safer in the home and work on those prevention strategies. Then um, we'll kind of offer a way to once you make changes, maintaining those changes in your daily life, not just in these eight sessions together, but going forward throughout the rest of your life because maintenance is really what's the hard part. I mean, when you think about weight loss even, and I hate to say this, but the hard part isn't losing the weight, it's keeping it off, right? So, I mean, it's hard to lose weight, but that's not the hardest part. So same with this, it's, it's hard to talk about falls and fall fears of falling and fall prevention strategies, but maintaining those strategies and maintaining your belief system that's what's really going to be where the hard work comes into play. And that will take place long after we're not doing our um, matter of balance program. Okay, so this programs traditionally delivered in the group format, right? And the, the group format is just so powerful because it provides everyone an opportunity to kind of talk about a common problem and then learn from each other and help each other maybe problem solve or deal with kind of this one shared common problem. But remember, this isn't going to be live. So you really, in order to get the most out of the program, need to be sharing your experiences and having those kind of group discussions with anyone, your colleague, maybe you're part of another exercise group right now. Maybe you have someone coming into the home to help you a little bit. Maybe that's just your partner, but trying to facilitate these conversations outside of the Zoom meeting is going to be what's really important. So I just want to make sure that I stress to you guys that everyone's going to have varying degrees of concerns with falling. Um, and if you share your experience with someone, they might not feel the same way, but that's okay because there's something to learn from both sides. So don't be, um, don't feel like you can only share your feelings and your thoughts and your processes about falling and fears of falling with someone who's exactly at your same level. So just because if someone's in a wheelchair and they have a fear of falling and then someone's using a walker and they have a fear of falling, there's a commonality between them, right? Even though the person in the wheelchair uses a wheelchair for mobility and isn't walking like someone is with the walker, you guys might have more in common than you think. So um, everyone's input is gonna be valuable in this um, course. And you're really gonna take a, a lot away from what everyone else has to feel and believe too. It's gonna help you kind of hone in on what your beliefs are and, and your thought processes. So like I said, the exercises that we're gonna do are gonna be geared, to, they're specific. They're gonna be the same exercises each time. They were designed for the program and there are a series of exercises that are going to be different than the big and loud exercises we've done in the past. So that will be kind of nice to get something new and different. And then there, we're gonna do them every single week, um, probably most likely starting with session two um, or session three. So I won't introduce those today, but I'll make sure that you guys have 
copies of those exercises so that you can be super successful with them at home and have pictures to look at. And then I'll also um, make sure we do them together. I'm trying to see if I can find them right now, but I believe most of them are seated. Some of them are standing. So when I take you through and I teach you all of them, um, the ones that aren't safe for you to do in standing, you just don't stand, you modify. And we'll, when we get there, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But um, the, the benefit of the exercises is that they're researched and studied to help you decrease your risk for falls. So they're gonna help you work on your balance strategies um, at your ankle and at your hip. And then there, it's also gonna help you work on your strength um, and your just endurance. And it's gonna be awesome. You guys are gonna love it. What I will touch on is my own personal experience with falls and my family and my close circle. So my grandma is 82 this year. She'll be 82 in November. And she walks without an assisted device she does have peripheral neuropathy. She lives out of state in Florida, so she can't really feel the bottoms of her feet very well, which lead to a lot of trips and falls. So about every three to four months, we get a call. Grandma's fallen down again. She's in the hospital. So the most recent fall that she had was probably about three or four weeks ago, and she broke her wrist. And unfortunately, it's this terrible negative cycle where she keeps falling and she keeps hurting herself and then so she doesn't exercise because she's hurt herself but really what she needs is exercise to help her not fall down so much so um for it to happen so close to home it's hard because um, your loved ones they don't tend to listen to you sometimes so any of my strategies that i try to bring to her she's not very open to but um, I feel like if this program was something that was offered in her community, she should definitely take advantage of it because it's just a lot of education and it really gets you thinking and just having a conversation one time isn't going to help get you there. It's got to be like reinforced over several sessions. So um, I'm with you. I'm living through it. It seems like as being her family member or like a, a person who's just like her support system that I feel helpless. Like there's nothing that I can do because she's still super independent and wants to do things her way and isn't very open to listening to ideas like, can we maybe use a cane? Can you have a therapist come into your home and, and work with you on balance or, um, a lot of the reasons why she has had falls is because her little puppy, well, it's not a puppy anymore. Her dog is older and is having accidents in the house. So she's sometimes slipping on the dog's urine, you know, trying to problem solve what's really going on is a lot harder, but I encourage you guys to figure out and get to the bottom of what's causing the falls. Is it, is it, a, it's most likely a combination of things, right? Not just, um, something going on, like it's not just her neuropathy. That's the only thing, it's one of the problems, but then when you add in the layer of like, oh, a, a water spill on the floor, that's gonna make things a lot more complicated too. So um, that's my own experience with falls. Maybe you could take some time and talk to your support person or your um, significant other caretaker how many falls have you had? Kind of describe what you were doing. Did you hurt yourself? Did it result in a hospitalization? Um, you know, what did you, did you change anything about the environment after you had the fall? Or, or is it just, you kind of kept on going the, the same way? So I'd like to introduce to you now this video and this video really outlines the program quite nicely. It's about 15 minutes, so get comfortable. The video itself is a little bit older, but the content and what they talk about is all very relevant and it's still very significant. So that's why I want to play it. Just try to listen to what they're saying because that will help explain a lot to what's going on with the program. So I'm going to share my screen now.
Let me go ahead and get A Matter of Balance, Managing Concerns About Falls is sponsored by Maine Health's Partnership for Healthy Aging. In our younger years, falling down is not usually a serious problem. When our bodies are quick and agile, a fall usually means little more than a quick rush to regain our composure and perhaps a small degree of embarrassment. But as we age, a fall isn't just embarrassing. For some older people, falling down can be incapacitating, both physically and emotionally. It is reasonable to be concerned about falls. A fall resulting in injury can be the beginning of a downward spiral, resulting in such things as isolation and a loss of independence. Studies indicate that between 25 and 50% of independently living older adults experience fear of falling. Many believe that restricting activities is a rational response to the very real dangers of falling. Even among older adults who have not experienced a fall, this fear can lead them to restrict their activity. Fear of falling can compromise quality of life by diminishing sense of well-being, limiting mobility, and reducing social interaction. This fear may actually contribute to falling as a result of reduced physical conditioning. So while being concerned may be reasonable, too much fear may compromise physical and mental well-being. A Matter of Balance, Managing Concerns About Falls is a program that acknowledges the risk of falling but emphasizes practical coping strategies to reduce this fear. A Matter of Balance, Managing Concerns About Falls is an evidence-based program offered in your community. A Matter of Balance is a program specifically designed to reduce fear of falling and improve activity levels among older adults who have this concern. The program was developed and evaluated by the Roy Ball Center for Enhancement of Late Life Function at Boston University and the New England Research Institutes. Results for those completing the program included a decreased fear of falling, increased confidence, increased activity level and mobility control, enhanced social activity, and increased mobility range. Long-term results included enhanced social activity, and increased mobility range. Just take a nice deep breath in. Good, and exhale. A Matter of Balance Good. acknowledges the Again. risk of falling, but emphasizes practical coping strategies to reduce the effects of that fear. It is a structured group intervention consisting of eight two-hour sessions and a variety of activities to address physical, social, and cognitive factors affecting the fear of falling. The class is taught by trained volunteer coaches and participation is limited to no more than 12 people. During the eight two-hour classes, participants learn to view falls and fear of falling as controllable, increasing the belief that one can engage in an activity without falling. Set realistic goals for increasing activity, helping to instill beliefs such as greater perceived control, greater confidence in one's abilities, a more realistic assessment of failures. Change their environment to reduce risk factors for falls. Promote exercise to increase strength and balance. Class activities include group discussion, problem solving, role play and skill building, assertiveness training, exercise training, videotapes, and practical solutions. Who could benefit from a matter of balance? Anyone who is concerned about falls, has sustained a fall in the past, restricts activities because of concerns about falling, is interested in improving flexibility, balance, and strength, is age 60 or older, ambulatory, and able to problem solve. Deemed safe for a wide variety of people with a wide variety of health concerns, and um, but they all lead to better physical fitness and better strength and ultimately better balance. All right, and probably that's the next thing that we're going to do is uh, set our books down, if you will, set your books down, and I will lead you through a series of exercises. Um, I will start you right off with warm-up exercises. 
okay? So for that, I'd like you to find a nice, comfortable posture. We'll just take a nice deep breath in. Good, and exhale. Good, and an exercise that I like to start off with is just called the good morning stretch. This is a stretch where we try to maintain good posture, but we gently move around just like a cat or a puppy when they wake up in the morning, they go, Ugh. and that just feels so good. Well, I'm more stable on my feet, I think, than I was before. You know, as you grow older, you know that you have, if you have any your wits about you, you realize you're going to have those times when you're apt to fall. And if you're prepared, uh, forewarned is forearmed, they say. So I, I felt that that would be a good program for me. And I feel it was. And um, by doing the exercise and then the balancing, um, I think it made us a little much sure, a bit sure of ourselves. I've seen the results of uh, people when they do have a fall and how limited they are uh, thereafter. And uh, therefore I feel I, I would like to know things that I can do to maintain my balance and keep my body uh, under control so that I don't fall. As you begin to get older and don't have as good balance, your family begins to worry about you. And lots of times our families are scattered and if they know that you're doing something to improve your balance, it gives them peace of mind. Yeah. Yeah. Another confidence point. Mm -hmm. yeah. In 2003, the Administration on Aging launched a three-year public-private partnership to increase older people's access to programs that have proven to be effective in reducing their risk of disease, disability, and injury. Working in partnership, Southern Maine Agency on Aging, the Partnership for Healthy Aging, Maine Medical Center Division of Geriatrics, and the University of Southern Maine School of Social Work proposed to translate a matter of balance to a volunteer lay leader model. The purpose of the grant is to evaluate whether a volunteer lay leader model is successful and cost effective, and to develop a toolkit to share this approach with others in Maine and around the country. Program adaptations have included volunteer coach training, the development of a participant workbook and satisfaction tool, modifying the exercise component, and including a visit from a health professional to the class. I took a matter of balance class the early part of last year, and I was so impressed, I immediately said to the ladies that were coaches, how do I become a coach? And before you know it, I was a coach. And I've coached three classes, this is my fourth class, and I just feel we're doing such a wonderful job for older citizens, helping them realize that you have to keep moving. The lifeline one says, if you're falling forward, brace yourself, but make a wide stance. Yeah. And you come back. Okay, you're going to go sideways, either side. Brace yourself, or you're falling. Same way with back. There is a sense of of, of liftedness when they when they leave the class. They're they're wanting to keep going, you know. And one of the challenges is that we find with this group is that they're in a place of wanting to continue something, keep the, keep the ball rolling. And um, we are encouraged and are actually challenged to find ways that they can then implement this into their lives and continue in some way, either in a group or a personal exercise plan or a way to continue to um, learn and grow and feel empowered in their life. Participants who have completed the class report that they are more comfortable talking about fear of falling and in increasing activity. They also plan to continue exercising. Research outcomes include statistically significant improvement in fall control and management, exercise, and social activity. Changing attitudes and behaviors is the primary goal of the program. A matter of balance places a strong emphasis on changing behaviors that are certain to make an already difficult situation worse. Um, and I guess just kind of get a sense from you of what you think being sort of is. Volunteer. Volunteer. Okay. Speaking up. Speaking up. Okay. Either one is obstacle. 
asking questions, asking questions, right? Standing up. Standing up for yourself. I think it's right. a fine line between being assertive and aggressive. Sometimes, um, if you are always assertive and making sure everybody hears you, hears you, hears you, that can come off as aggressive. But being clear about things and about how you feel about things, that is really more about being assertive. What about being assertive with your doctor? Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. When can't you? Well, when you feel that he's about had it. <laughs> How about what you had it with him? Yeah. Yeah. I, know. I think that happens more often. Yeah. Well, that's true, but you know, sometimes you think you oh, have kind of overdone that. When I take another fall and I say, oh boy, he isn't going to want to see me. <laughs> I'm not going to be a servant. I'm going to think I'm okay and I'm going to be okay. Yeah, and you usually are. Yeah. I don't like bleeding, telling the doctor everything. <laughs> well, I'm not saying you can't have any secrets. Yeah, but you can have a few secrets. But when it comes to your, to your emotional health, your mental health, um, your, your medical health, social oh. health, all these things really are the doctor's concern. What about, um, one of the things, asking questions, what about asking for help? Are you sort of when it comes to asking for help? Well, a lot of people are hesitant to ask for help. They're embarrassed to, I think. Embarrassed to be uh, even needing the help? Depend dependent on somebody mm -hmm. else, or they don't want to make a bother of themselves. That's right, Helen. No, that's okay. exactly right. Don't want that label of somebody who constantly no. needs help or being a nuisance. And <laughs> uh -huh. well, about the other person. You don't want to bother the other person, I guess. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. true. You help them. I use my cane, walker, or other pieces of adaptive equipment as prescribed by my doctor or therapist. I use a grab bar when I get in and out of the tub or shower. Do your apartments have grab bars? It's great that they're there. Handrails um, here, here, and, and over here can be used um, to help getting in and out of the tub and for studying. Um, one thing we talked about was um, not storing medicines in the medicine cabinet in the bathroom because of um, the moisture and the heat that can be generated from the shower. So the suggestion is to put them in the kitchen um, where they're much easier to see okay. and to use. Well, I like you know the fact that you have a lot of space yeah. um, to take your medicines. You can get water from the sink, bring it over here. You've got a light, an extra light, so yeah. that you can read yeah. the labels very clearly. Yeah. You can read your insulin syringe very clearly. Yeah. And if you needed to reorder medicines, your phone is right yeah. here. Your calendar is there so you can check off that you've taken your medicine. So this is a much better system. Yeah, to do that's what way. I was doing this one, reordering some, mm -hmm. I gotta get more of these. Well, my well that's an important, important point that oh, you yes. know about. So yeah. if you have a light right yeah. as you come in the hall, yeah. in yeah. your bedroom, well, yes. so that you can reach well, and turn well, it off. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is a little bit of a hazard, yeah. um, because well, if you were to go and reach for it, 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 it'll move right along with you. It certainly does. It, it's an easy roller. So those are just a couple of little hints yes. that, that yes. certainly... Well, I had to give you some. We had to have a couple of yeah. hints to look at. One recommendation we did have, the bottom of the tub is texturized. Um, but I still think that, that that has the potential of being too slippery. It's hard to tell unless you feel it. So a rubber mat in there would be helpful. And having things in the corners so that they're not um, in your path of walking. The rugs have a texturized rubber backing so they're not a slip rug. And otherwise it's well lit. Because of advances in healthcare and better nutrition, more and more people are living longer than ever before. 
the aging of the baby boom generation is going to require more widespread preventive care than is currently available. For those who care about maintaining quality standards of living, a matter of balance is one sure-footed step in the right direction. Don't hesitate to go. Don't hesitate. It's very, very helpful and very informative. Don't feel that you shouldn't go because you might be feel that you're getting old or that sort of thing. We just have to face that we are getting old and we need help and why not take it? I found the balance program to be very helpful, especially in improving my mental attitude toward the matter of falling. The instructors were outstanding and the classmates were terrific. I have begun to exercise and look forward to a walking program. I've also increased my assertiveness. I seem to be more aware of every situation for my safety. I now stop, look, and listen to my surroundings. I never hurry anymore. I love the balance class. It showed me that you must exercise every day to keep living a healthy life, and I plan on making it to at least 100. I moved groceries to different shelves. I make more trips carrying smaller amounts from car to kitchen. This class has made me more aware and more confident. A matter of balance program made me realize that I'm responsible for me to raise my self-esteem. Okay. Let me stop sharing my screen for a second. That was a good video, right? I mean, it had a lot of themes that were like a little bit um, like outdated, but the content, what they were talking about was really, really good. So we're going to kind of go over um, different points that the video hit on just like as a summary to so make sure we all kind of are viewing it the same way. So one thing that I noticed about the video is that there's like this shared concern. So notice, I don't know if you guys noticed, but fear of falling is, is a shared concern amongst older adults in the video and it they also represent a wide range of physical abilities so it's definitely a commonality right something else that i noticed is that falls can be a real problem and we're going to talk about this in just a minute here but how the fear of falling is presented as an appropriate response to the problem and the problem is falling and that just happens to affect a lot of older adults. So staying active, the video addressed how staying active in whatever way is feasible to you as an individual um, can help you prevent falls. So exercising can range from pushing yourself in your wheelchair to doing leg lifts in your wheelchair to just walking up and down the hall with your walker or even dancing like exercise can be dancing so it's just depending on the individual but staying active is an important piece of reducing your risk for falls it is and i'm glad that we're going to be talking about that the next kind of topic that they touched on in the video is going to be practical or kind of personal solutions so many i don't know if you noticed how many of the strategies to reduce the fear of falling involve common sense so each person is going to know what solutions will work for them and ones that will not and you guys are going to know right off the bat if i give us a, a solution you're going to know yeah that's gonna work or no mm -mm, I'm not gonna do that that's not gonna work for me and here's why and so just being open and honest with yourself about some of those solutions and customizing them to yourself as an individual is going to be important the video touched on assertiveness which I love I think at one point um, someone was asking how do you be assertive with your doctor or should you be absurd assertive with your doctor and it just, it makes sure, it, it just ensures that your needs are being linked um, to specifically in this case, fall prevention. So I wanna encourage all of you guys throughout the next eight sessions to become assertive if you're not assertive and you know get more comfortable talking about falls and um, you know things that involve falls too. 
The last thing that I, I kind of noted about the video was responsibility. So what it comes down to is your doctor, your family, your caregiver, your support system, your friends, your significant other, they all kind of support you in an effort to prevent falls. But ultimately, we all have to take responsibility as an individual and the action will lie on you and, and not those other people. So I just love that they kind of brought that up. You know, we all are here. Let's take responsibility over the next eight sessions to do as much as we can as an individual for ourselves, right? Okay, good. So, when you are talking to your loved one later or your caretaker later about the video, you can kind of, you can talk about um, how fear of falling, it's worthy of consideration, right? And how you recognize that concerns about falling um, can affect your daily activities. Maybe you didn't realize it until this moment, but it can unnecessarily lead to a restriction in activity and as a result, increased fall risk. I think even too with the, um, with the Alzheimer's disease community or just the dementia community, a lot of times we feel like people are gonna be unsafe. So it's like, let's sit down, let's limit our movement, let's not do anything to make you unsafe. But we have to backtrack and realize that by doing that, are we causing more harm? by not letting them be active still. So there's a way to be active and still be safe, right? Okay, um, there are successful problem solving um, concerns about falling and in, in the model, the video kind of modeled some of that. So um, yeah, talk to your, talk to your family about that, that video, maybe show them. I'll send you the link so you can show them. There's a lot of misconceptions about falling, and we're going to get into some of those now, too. Something that um, I want to make sure that you mentioned maybe to, or it gets brought up, even if you're not thinking about it, is um, concerns, about, concerns about falling. Um, are common and they, you can have some, people can have some intense concerns about it. So when you also think about it, it could be in de very independent from the actual risk of falling. So just a fear of falling could be so different than an actual fall, but it could be just as debilitating, just as limiting. I'm going to have to turn down the air in the house because it's hot. Oh, it's 80, you guys. It's too hot in here. Let's lower it. Okay, so when you think about concerns about falling, they can sometimes become this self-fulfilling prophecy where older individuals, like I mentioned, they reduce their activity level. Maybe it was intentional, maybe it wasn't, but they reduce the activity level and they reduce it out of fear. Fear that they are gonna fall. And they may not only experience then a diminished quality of life, but then it's putting them more at risk for falling because they're losing that physical activity. So the best solution to concerns about falling are our own solutions that we come up with as individuals. So help encourage your loved one to come up with their own ideas and their own thought processes of what is gonna work for them. It's better for us to come up with our own ideas than sometimes being told a bunch of ideas. Okay, the next thing I want to do is kind of go over some of the um, references and handouts that you're going to be getting. So I'm going to share my screen again. This is um, what you're looking at here is going to just be, and you can print this off. You don't have to use it. It's totally up to you. It's handout 1.1. So notice that there's handouts and then there's references. So th this is handout 1.1. So when it has a one in front of it, that means it correlates to session one. So like next week, if you get a handout, it would be like handout 2.1. And that would mean that it correlates to session two, handout one. 
So this is um, the first and only handout that you're going to be getting. I lied. It's you're going to get two handouts this week. So this is just to keep you organized. Today is session one. It's an intro to the program. So you can write the date that you took the Zoom meeting or you don't have to. It's just for organization and kind of what each session is going to cover. All right. So that's one thing that I wanted to share with you guys. And then the next thing is the references. So you're going to get a lot of different tools of things that you can use. And the best part is, is that they all have their, um, they're all cited, they're all researched, and there's um, a list of where you can go to see where all this information came from, which is awesome because we all want to make sure that our facts are actual facts, right? So this is reference 1.2. And it's called Intro to the Program, Fear of Falling Fact Sheet. So it's five pages, but the last two pages are just going to be all of the references that they use. So it's really only like three pages. And I want you to kind of like read through it and just gather, gather, gather all the information. I'm not going to go word for word and kind of read it here because it's something that either your caretaker can read to you or you can read on your own and just kind of take, you could take some notes afterwards if you want um, about how you felt, or you can highlight some areas that you felt like were interesting. So this is the first reference. And then there's another reference that I actually want to go through that I find a little bit more interesting and that's reference 1.3. So let me get that up here. Okay, 1.3. Back to sharing the screen. Okay. Um, let's make this bigger. Okay, this one's cool. So it's nine pages. It's a lot longer, but it's a bunch of, um, and this one's called Intro to the Program Fall Fact Sheet. So this, these are the actual facts. These are what's fun. Um, it's a bunch of little topics, like mini topics, divide, and then all the facts that come with it. So like the first one it's going to talk about is addressing like how big of a problem falls really is um, in the U.S. and across the country and who it affects and what kind of negative outcomes are linked to falls and then who's at risk. Um, talks about, this is page two. Okay, so it talks about fall injuries and then like what kind of injuries people suffer once they fall. I remember how I mentioned my grandma broke her wrist. Um, and then how can older adults prevent falls? So this is kind of what I want to talk about and just go through these with you guys. Um, we have some time, so we're doing good. Okay, so we've talked about this before, exercise regularly, right? Which we implement, which we do do at Oakwood. It's very important. Um, talks about leg strength, improving balance, and to getting more, to also progress that. So not just to exercise and do the same thing over and over and over again, but to constantly be challenging yourself and get to a different point. Um, tai Chi programs are really good because it's going to address balance um, in addition to um, endurance and strength. So ask your doctor or pharmacist to review your medicine. So I love, 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 love telling people to take their list of meds that you guys are on and just go bring it up to the pharmacist one day and say, are there any drug drug interactions? Do all these medications seem to work out? Because what happens is you go to your primary care, you get put on a med, you go to the hospital, you get put on a med, then you see your neurologist and you get put on another med. And sometimes all these doctors have a hard time communicating with each other about what meds people are on. And before you know it, you're on a med to treat a symptom that you're getting from another med and it all becomes just too much. So I love taking the prescription or your uh, medication sheet right up to the pharmacist and just asking them about are any of these medications having weird interactions or causing my dizziness or my drowsiness to get worse and just hearing what they have to say is is so helpful there's also something called um a geriatrician just like a pediatrician but it's a doctor who specializes in the aging adult and i've already decided when I'm an older adult, I want to see a geriatrician because they specialize in the older adult, right? Who wouldn't want to have like a, a general doctor who specializes in the older adult, just like a pediatrician specializes in children. 
Okay, have your eyes checked. An annual eye exam is super, super important. At least once a year, um, they'll see if there's been any changes to your vision because one of the things that can lead to falls is changes in vision. So sometimes I've had lots of people who um, have two different, and I'm sure I don't wear glasses or contacts. So you guys probably know a lot more about this than me, but sometimes people have different vision levels in each eye. So there's all sorts of crazy stuff that the eye doctor can do for you to make sure you're optimizing your vision. So three systems for balance. Remember your visual system, your feeling of your feet on the ground, right? And then, oh, the third's escaping me. How could this be? I talk to you guys about it all the time. It will come to me. Your inner ear, the vestibular system. So making sure that your visual system is getting checked out every year is important because it's one of your three systems for balance. Okay, have, um, okay, let's see. Make your home safer by reducing the tripping hazards. So you can add grab bars inside and outside. There's a company in Arizona, if you are local, it's called Measurabilities. And it is a physical therapist and his wife that opened up this company. They will come into your home and they will do free home evaluations for safety. Awesome resource to have. Everyone who is an older adult who is falling in their home or fears of falling in their own home, just have measurabilities come out, see what they can um, shed their light on with their experience of what they see. How can you make the tub shower situation safer? The toilet, can you add a railing? Can you improve the lighting? You know, there's a lot of things to consider there. So I love that. Um, okay, to lower the hip fracture risk. We all know um, a lot of older adults tend to fall and they break their hip, right? And this, the next page on the fact sheet or in two pages, it talks about hip fractures among older adults. So we'll get there really soon, but we know hip fractures are a huge problem. So what can you do to decrease your chances of breaking your hip? This worksheet suggests getting adequate calcium and vitamin D and then doing weight bearing exercises where you're actually putting weight through your joints and then getting screened, screened and treated for osteoporosis. Here's all the references for everything that we just talked about, if you wanted to dig further into more information. And then the next little topic covers costs of um, falls. They are so expensive when older adults fall, and I, it just blows my mind um, how expensive this could be. So in this, in 2009, emergency departments treated 2.2 million non-fatal fall injuries and more than 50, more than 582,000 of these patients had to be hospitalized. It is just so crazy how many people fa falls affects and then the, the cost of it, right? Direct costs are what the patient and the insurance companies pay for treating fall related injuries. These costs are gonna include your hospital stay, your nursing home care, your doctors, um, medical equipment, prescriptions, and how expensive really is it? So let's just go to 2020 because we're here. By 2020, the annual direct and indirect cost of all fall injuries is expected to reach 50, almost $55 billion. Wow. That's a lot of money that we're spending here on falls, right? It's a huge problem. Um, how do these costs break down? Talks about age and sex. And then I switched the page, um, type of injury and treatment setting. So who's falling and how are they falling? That's good information to read. Um, I, I did wanna touch on the hip fracture part because I think it's super important and there's one big misconception. So do you think it's more common, this is a question and you, you gotta answer it. Do you think it's more common to fall and break your hip or to break your hip and then fall? What do you think? What do you think? The answer is fall and then break your hip. That's what's most, that's what's more common. It's a little bit of a misconception that you broke your hip and then you fell. 
that does happen. It can happen, but not as common. Okay, where are we? So here we're in the hip fracture section. Um, women sustained three quarters of all hip fractures. So women are breaking their hips more than men. Um, there's some really startling statistics here, you guys. So just take your time, kind of read through this whole packet of reference 1.3. How can hip fractures be prevented? More of that weight bearing exercise. And then here, some more references, and then just some background information on how falls are still a huge issue. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for a second. Um, I wanna make sure that you guys have access to those, so I'll get those to you. And then the last thing that I wanna touch on is your homework. So your homework is not that bad. I hope you continue to exercise, but this homework is an exercise. It is a worksheet and it's called handout 1.2. So let me pull it up here. So it's going to list 12 statements and this is called the intro to the program fall related attitude survey. So we're going to kind of go through some of this next week, but, or next session, um, there's going to be 12 statements and they're going to describe attitudes associated in some way with falls. So you're gonna read each statement and then you're gonna say that you either agree or you disagree. And um, there's, two, there's two pages. So go all the way to question 12. So for example, like number four, if I report a fall to a doctor, he or she may think that I can't take care of myself. And then you write that you agree or you disagree with that statement. So do this on your own or have your care partner kind of help you, but try your best to have this filled out for next week so that we can kind of um, go through it together. And then you can go ahead and read a little bit on um, what happens if you do answer or agree to any of those questions. That's something that we will touch base on next time. So kind of just in summary, if you're um, joining me on this journey, um, for the next seven sessions, we're going to kind of go through this program called a matter of balance and we're going to have discussions and we're going to share information. And, but most importantly, we're going to really help address fear of falling and reduce, um, fall risk in all of your guys' lives, which is going to be awesome. We're going to do that through exercise and through, um, handouts and through discussion. So, if you have any questions, remember you can get a hold of me on my email. It's exercisept267 at gmail.com. My name is Dr. Lauren. I'm here to help you. If there's any um, troubles that you guys are having after seeing the handouts or the links, just be sure to let me know and I will make sure you get what you need. It's been wonderful starting out our first session of A Matter of Balance with you guys. I hope it's gotten your mind kind of thinking and twirling in a, in a bunch of different directions of um, kind of where you're at as an individual and maybe where you want to go towards. And even if it hasn't, this is really good information for the caretakers and the support systems um, for our loved ones that have, um, you know, that are members of Oakwood. So it's been real, you guys. We'll talk more soon. Everyone take care. Until next time, baby boy, and I will see you soon. All right. Thanks, everyone.